Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, welcome to our Interclass Sea Night fundraiser. It's honestly been quite a journey bringing our work from the stage to the screen. Uh, we are the students of the Stella Adler Studio of Acting's Day Conservatory classes of 2021 and 2022, raising money to benefit the Marsha P. Johnston Institute and Campaign Zero. In response to the Black Lives Matter movement and the horrific murders of countless Black men and women in America, we would like to support these organizations that help end police violence in America and provide healing communities for Black trans women and women of color. Tonight, we have prepared for you a collection of eight short scenes brought to you live via Zoom and YouTube. There will be a short break in between each scene, also an intermission. Unlike traditional live theater, if at any time you need to walk away, you can pause and come back. We'll be waiting for you. Thank you in advance for your contribution to this cause, which means so much to us. We have attached the links to where you can donate down in the description of this video. You can also find it on our Instagram page. Any donation will help make an impact. We as artists and fellow quarantiners have been itching for the opportunity to support the Black Lives Matter movement. There are several ways to support the movement through protests, donations, and by supporting black owned businesses. During this pandemic, it has been hard to stay motivated to do anything outside of our houses. Conveniently, because of technology, we don't have to. We are excited to utilize our skills to support this fundraising event. It is lovely to have you all here tonight to support our cause. So shall we get to it? Yeah. Live from our living room to yours, please sit back, relax, and enjoy our show. I have an idea for a play. It's called A Play About David Mamet Writing a Play About Harvey Weinstein. You can't make this shit up. I mean, David Ma David fucking Mamet wrote a play about Harvey Weinstein. For real. Okay, so here's my idea. Lights up on David Mamet at a typewriter. In my mind, David Mamet still writes at a typewriter. Stick with me. He is white. He wears round glasses. You know the type. He looks like he's overcompensating for something. David Mamet, in case you weren't aware, made his name writing macho men in plays and films largely devoid of women. His characters are hitmen and businessmen and ad men, and congressmen, and con men, and newsmen, and upperclassmen, and salesmen, and policemen who say things like, Once you start coming with the customers, it's time to quit. That's an actual line he wrote for one male cop to say to another male cop. You know, I love women. That's neither here nor there. I love writing women. That stuff they say about me. You think it's unfair? I think it's inaccurate. If one were to count all the male and all the female roles in my plays, it would probably come out about even. So I counted. I looked up all of his plays, every single one. I even contacted the National Theatre Archive in London and got them to send me the program for The Vikings and Darwin, a, a play that they commissioned for their education department in uh, 2006. I tallied up all the characters in all of Mamet's plays, and here are the results. 135 men, 51 women. About even. But my point 
isn't that he writes more men than women. My point is that his women are mostly props. They typically don't have much of an arc, or if they do, like in, say, Oleana, they are really problematic. Oleana is a play in which a female student falsely accuses her professor of rape. It was written as a response to the Anita Hill hearings. Charming, isn't it? In an interview with Charlie Rose, Mamet talks about his inspiration for writing the piece. Issues of sexual harassment and political correctness, those issues terrify me. In what way? Well, even a fish wouldn't get in trouble if he kept his mouth shut. That's what terrifies you? Getting into trouble. Do you want to know what terrifies me? When I was a college professor, there wasn't a single professor who wasn't having a relationship with a young student. Were you? When you were a professor, did you know of any student that falsely accused her professor of rape? False accusations of rape in real life are incredibly rare. For the record, men are more likely to be raped than to be falsely accused of rape. The FBI reports that only about 2% of rape, rape accusations are false, and yet, and yet, only about 40% of rapes are ever reported because, among other things, women are afraid they won't be believed. So, this is my idea for a play. David Mamet sits at a typewriter. A woman enters. She picks up one of his awards, his Olivier Award, or, or one of his Obies, or his Pulitzer, or his New York Drama Critics Circle Award, or, or maybe his London Film Critics Circle Award. It doesn't really matter. Just whichever is the heaviest, I guess. This one, the Obie. Um, actually... Don't interrupt me. Right, right, yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to interrupt. It's just that... Um... Shut your face. Okay. She thinks about whether she's going to bash his head in with it or, or slit his throat with one of the sharp edges or shove it up his ass. Yeah, but see, sorry to interrupt, but um. Damn it, ma'am it. Obies are framed certificates. Oh. Fuck it. In this play, Obies look like Oscars, little dudes with hard-ons. So. She approaches him with it. I should have mentioned. She's a motherfucking ninja. So, she kills the motherfucker. End of play. Oh, wait, wait. No, 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 that's not the end. <clears throat> the second Obi, she chops off his dick and uses it to smear blood on the pages of his manuscript, rendering them illegible. Man, that was fun. Time for the meeting? It's over. Oh, come on, let's go. The meeting's over. The meeting was at two. Shit, did you cover for me? Nope. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. What are you going to do?
gonna do, right? Ah, so what's the deal anyway? Oh, it was uh, just about this newspaper article. There on the front page. The Christian Coalition People's Front are picketing the massage parlor. Is the captain mad? Is the captain mad? I'm off the case. Oh, shit. I'm totally fucked! What, 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 who, who do you give the case to? Bill Horton. See, Bill Horton is a total suck up. It's political, man. Come on. Yeah, well, Bill Horton is gonna make lieutenant, and I'm not. What am I gonna tell Beth? Look, look, don't give up so fast, okay? Bill Horton's not gonna catch those girls either. Right? They won't even be able to get inside the door. Those girls aren't taking any new customers. So if they don't know you, no luck. How do you know that? Uh, I, 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 I heard. Who from? Who people. No, nobody, nobody. You went back in there, I'll kill you. I didn't, I then swear. What? I've been kind of, I've been kind of hanging out with, with that one girl, the one that I went to, but she doesn't work there anymore, so it's fine. Heather? Yeah. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we, we've, we've kind of been, we've kind of been dating, you know. But, uh, but, but her roommate is Shandy, right? And Sandy still works there. And that's what Sandy said, that they're totally suspicious that they're even frisking guys. Wait, back up. When, when did she say this? I don't know. The other night. I've kind of been, I've, I've kind of been hanging out at their house. Uh, see, that's, that's the funny thing, because I couldn't find Heather's number at first because the number in her line was disconnected. And so I had to call Sandy. And, and it turns out that um, they're living together. Uh, so, you know, Heather was like, yeah, you know, come down and meet me after work, you know? So, uh, you know, like, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Like, was it gonna be free? <laughs> like, would I have to pay? But um, yeah, it turns out she's, she's just this really sweet girl and she just wants to have a good time. And so we're dating now, you know? I mean, I'm not paying her or anything, you know? Oh, good, good. Cause that's really what I'm worried about. I'm only telling you this because you're doing it too. What? But, Andy, but but you gotta be careful. You know, you're uh you're engaged. Who told you this, Sandy? Mm-hmm. Not in so many words, but uh yeah, she she intimated. What exactly did she say? She said you two got back to nature. All right, when did she say this? We were supposed to talk the other night, but she never showed up. Last night at her house, you know, she was, <sighs> they were having a party. No surprise though, it's a total party house. That's why I fell asleep, man. I haven't been getting any sleep. But what did y'all do? Cause I didn't get it. We didn't do anything. No, oh, yeah. Well, maybe I got it wrong. You know, she was uh, she wasn't talking too straight. You know, she kept getting wild, kept uh, walking around, asking people to shake her hand, and then like she wanted to see if her hand felt like a pussy. So like a bunch of dudes were like, most definitely, right? <laughs> and then this one guy was like, "There's only one way to know for sure." <laughs> Who are these guys? I don't know, man. There's always a bunch of hoses that like show up at the house. They follow Heather home from the bar. And then I keep telling Heather, you, you can't be so nice and let all these people just come in your house, you know? But uh, I don't know. She still got some whore in her, you know? Same with Sandy. What do you mean? Oh, well, uh, well, well, like, there, there was this one thing um, about Heather, you know, that I was interested in, a, in, a, in uh, 
Well, well, you know, you know what that was. But um, but yeah, uh, the thing is, Heather won't do it. You know, she says that it's something that she does for money. Um, but it's not like she likes to do it. So she won't do it with me. Fine. But I guess Heather told Sandy about it. And last night, Sandy comes over and she's like, she'd be willing to do it if I wanted. And <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't want to cheat on Heather, but man, I just got a hard on just thinking about that shit, you know? You stupid, stupid fuck! Fuck! Why do you act like that all the time? Do you see these people? Do you see these people? They're never going to let up. They're never going to let up. And I'm the one that's going to have to pay. Because I'm always stuck with stupid shit with you. You're ruining my life. Your life. Your life is good. I would kill for your life. Shit, You're man. always complaining. And I don't fucking get it. Your mouth is bleeding. I'm, I'm sick of people always telling me I can't do things. Let me, let me look at your mouth, man. I'm sick of it. No, no, no. It's not fair. It's not fair. I'm sorry, I, I hit you in the mouth. <laughs> Fuck, man. Crying like a little girl over here, man. <laughs> I said I'm sorry. Your life is good. Okay, uh, big breakup scene. Skylar's dorm room, page 76. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do it on our feet. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, get the blood moving, see how it feels. Okay, sure. Uh, let's say I'll play Will, you play Skylar. Uh, English Skylar, regular Skylar. Uh, English for now, we'll see. Yeah. Right. Okay, page 76, all right. <clears throat> That's a really serious thing to say. I mean, we could be in California next week and, and you might find out something about me that you don't like. And you know, maybe you'd wish you hadn't said that, but it's such a serious thing to say that you can't take it back. And now I'm stuck in California with someone who doesn't really want to be with me, just wishes they had a take back. What? What's a take back? I don't want a take back. I just want you to come to California with me. A less Cockney, I think. Oh, was I doing Cockney? Hello. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, let's try it again. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, I can't come to California with you. 
Why not? Because one, I have a job here, and two, because I live here. Look, if, if you don't love me, you should just tell me because that's such a- I'm a, not saying I don't love you. Wait, wait, won't you come? What, what are you so scared of? What am I so scared of? Uh, well, what aren't you scared of? You, you live in this safe little world where and you're, no one challenges you and you're scared shitless to do anything else. Okay, but, that's, 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 that's weird. That's, that's like a weird accent. But it's English. No, no, it's, it's not. Well, just scrap the accent. No, 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 it's, it's important. I'll try harder. It, it's just a read through, man. Come on, come on, go. You're afraid of me. What, what, what am I afraid of? You're afraid of me that I, that I won't love you back. But you know what? I'm afraid too, but at least I'm honest with you. What do you want to know? That I'm a fucking orphan? I didn't know that. You don't want to hear how I got cigarettes put out on me since I was a little kid. That this, this isn't surgery? That the motherfucker stabbed me? You don't want to hear that shit, Skylar. I want to know because I want to help you. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh, that is a fucking good scene. Right? <laughs> yeah, you do it really well. Thanks. That motherfucker stabbed me. Oh, man. Oh, no, man. No kidding. It's raw. Yeah. Hey, uh, can, I, can I give it a go? Uh, sure. Is yeah. that okay? I mean, we have a lot to do, Ben, but sure, let's, let's, let's do it right now. What am I afraid of? You're afraid of me, that I won't love you back, but you know what? I'm afraid too, but at least I'm honest with you. Yo, what do you want to know, that I'm a fucking orphan? I didn't know that. You don't want to hear that I got cigarettes put out on me since I was a little kid. This isn't surgery that the motherfucker stabbed me. You don't want to hear that shit. Ben! What? What, what is wrong with you? No, I, I think I think Will's really upset. What? It, it's you, 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 don't, you don't throw a chair. No, I, I think Will is really upset. Are you kidding me? No, I mean, it's, the, it's the first time he's talking about his childhood. Okay, fine, but he, he's not psychotic. Plus... The chair. Yo, forget about the, the chair. The scene is intense. Why would he break a chair in Skylar's dorm room? He's got a temper. What? Yeah, he's got that. He's a fighter. He's, he's scrappy. He's got that, that explosive quality that, you know, I've been there. I've seen the mean streets. I got a band-aid over the no, bridge of my nose. No, kind of no, thing. no, absolutely not. Why not? It's good. Let's just try it out. No. What do you mean, no? I want to try it out, so we try it out. That idea is terrible. It's a joke. Will isn't going to do that. It's insane. Doesn't go with the whole tone of his character. Will's smart, but he's not cocky about it. He's got turmoil, but it's beneath the surface. And he loves her, but he doesn't know how to show it. Doesn't want her to think he's whip, you know? He doesn't want to be in love because it makes him seem weaker. And if there's one thing Will Hunting doesn't want to do, it seem weak. He's saying, I don't love you. Not because he doesn't love Skylar, but because he's trying to be strong. Oh, okay, well, that, that all makes good sense. Okay. I can, uh, I can just go to hell. Ben? No, no, I, I, I mean it. That all makes very good sense. And maybe I should just go to hell. Seriously, shut up. Well, why don't we read something later, like the Chucky dialogue? Yeah. The Chucky, the Chucky dialogue? Yeah, you, you sound great on him. You know, he'd be more likely to throw the chair. Let's read this. This is exciting. Yeah. Hey, fuck you, man. Chucky isn't throwing a chair. Why not? Because it's dumbass. It, it sucks. It's, it's suck ass. It's, it's suck -o No, it Probably. isn't. It's, it's, it's perfect. When the fuck is Chucky going to throw a chair? He's got 10 lines. He has more lines than that. Come on. I'm not playing Chucky and you're playing Will, if that's what you're thinking. Ben? Yeah, this, God, this is bullshit, man. These are not your decisions to make. Well, someone has to make them. Uh, and that someone is you? Yes, Ben, it is. Why? Because I know what the hell I'm talking about. Oh, okay. You think you're so much goddamn better than everybody. You honestly think you could play this part? I, I don't know yet. Well, I do. I can. That's not the point, Matt. Both of our names are on that script. But that part was written for me. By who? 
man, come on, man, give me a fucking break. Like, I, I appreciate this deep psychological attachment you've developed for well fucking hunting over the last mm-hmm. four hours, but you're not the only person involved. This is my goddamn apartment, and that is my name on the cover. Yeah, right after mine. Well, are you nuts? It's, it says Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. And, not with, not occasionally including Ben Affleck. And my name is first. Not alphabetically. But on the script, context clues down. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? I can't take you right now. I... Here, look, we'll just, uh, we'll just flip a fucking coin. What? It's fair, right? No. You can call it. Heads. Heads, it's you. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I just want to move forward here. Do you want to do two out of three? Oh, really? You don't mind? Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, I, I, I really sound like that. I really, I really sound like that. Wow, you are such a sore oh, loser. Oh, Matt Damon. I get everything I want. Two out of three? Two out of three? How about two out of three? Wow, Ben, that is a great impersonation of me. You are such a good actor. Oh, that my God. That is a really great impersonation of me. Oh, my God. Shut up. Can oh. we please just be professional here? We have made a decision, so let's move. I, I, I just want to say one more thing about this, and, and this is the absolute last thing. So here it is. If that coin had come up tails, you would have made me keep flipping it until it hit ends. I'm not going to do that, but you would have. Because you are that kind of person, and I am not that kind of person. Let's get started. We're not doing this. Forget this. Mm-mm. What? That's... No, we're acting like children and you're acting like an asshole. Oh, and, and I'm the only one? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. No, sorry. No, no, sorry. No, 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 sorry. I'm not fighting you every step of the way. What? We're not fighting. Calm down. It's the same thing every time, man. We're never going to get it together. But yeah, we will. We'll work it out. No, we won't. Not this time. I'm done. Excuse me? I... Done with what? With everything, okay? Maybe you should just grow the hell up and focus on something else. Fine, fine. Relax. We'll we'll work on Catcher for a while. Catcher? No, I gotta go. Where? It's almost four. Oh. Sorry. Um, what time will you be back? Listen... Did you hear that? Uh, that. Yeah. Did you order food? No. Can you come over here next to me? No. Go get it. No, we're working. It might be Casey. You hate Casey. No, I don't. Just go get the door. the script. What? It's knocking. I, I, I don't understand. Does it have like little hands or something? Shut up. We're gonna die. No, calm down. There's a knife. It's not angry. It's just like sitting there quietly. <laughs> I'm fucking out of here. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah, go hide under my bed. I will. All right, script. Want a piece of Ben Affleck? You got a piece of Ben.
Oh my God. I have a friend and butterflies, radiant, invisible butterflies. Where did that even come from? I just told him some stupid fucking story about radiant, invisible butterflies when all I really wanted to say to him was, please, 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 just, just, just take me upstairs right now and, and, and tear my stupid clothes off my stupid body with, with, with your fucking teeth and, and fucking fuck me so hard and so long and so loud that, that, that the bed breaks and the universe disappears and, and the world stops in its rotation and, and our epic, ridiculous sublime lovemaking is the last thing that the universe ever even knows. But instead, I told him some stupid fucking story about radiant invisible butterflies in some pathetic attempt to try to let him know that I understand him and that he could do with me as he would. And I could see totally clearly on his face that he didn't get the message, not even close. It's because he cannot see me as a woman. It's because the women that are real to him aren't like me. They're a lot more like her. Oh. Oh. oh, hello. Am I interrupting? No. I mean, no. Are you all right? Of course. Really? No. I mean, yes, of course. You seem... What? I don't know. Do you want to talk to me about it? I would so like us to be friends, but I can't help but feel... Yes? That you sort of... What? Hate me. I can't help but feel that you sort of hate me. I do. I do hate you. I, I hate you so much that I can barely stand to look at you. It, except for the fact that I'm a little bit in love with you too, or, or infatuated or, or bewitched like everyone else. And, and of course I envy you absurdly and I wanna just like slap you right hard across the face, but then also bring you a rum and coke and talk with you until 4 a.m. with our shoes off and just tell you about everything that, great. Let's start with the slap. Wait, what? Let's start with the slap. I understand you perfectly. And, and I'm thrilled that you're finally talking to me. And I think the only thing for us to do is as you just suggest, but I don't think it can happen without the slap. So ready. You're my stepmother. I'm not going to slap you. I'm not leaving this room until you slap me hard. Just once right across the face. Are you crazy? Why would I slap you? <sighs> Let's not waste time. I want rum and coke and girl talk, so. Oh my God. That hurt. Oh my God, I'm so, so sorry. That hurt. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. You just slapped me across my damn face. I know, I know I did, I really did. How did it feel? It felt great. Good. How did it feel for you? It hurt. It, it's still stinging now. Now go. Go? Go and get me a rum and coke and, and get one for yourself too. Okay. And then I want to hear all about it. Um, go. Uh, okay. I, okay. <laughs> I like her. I think she's a good person. She's like an avocado, you know, kind of good and, and good for you with, with sort of a weird texture. I don't know what made me think of that. 
I've never compared anyone to a fruit or vegetable before. Okay. Is an avocado a fruit or a vegetable? It's a vegetable. Good. Thanks. Anyways, I'd like to be her friend. I'd like to help her. I, I think that would feel good. Okay, um, so I've got the mixings, you know, the rum and the Coke, of course, and then I also brought us some snacks. Perfect. Yeah? Sure. Though, I don't actually love rum and Coke. It was more a metaphor, a metaphorical drink rather than... Do you want something else? Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's fine. You know, uh, no, the will break down if you... Oh, yeah, okay. Um... <clears throat> okay, so. Yes? What's wrong? With? No. What's wrong? You mean with everything? What in particular? Well, you know, love, I guess. Ah, specifically or in general? Specifically. The doctor? Wait, how did you know? Are you serious? Everyone knows. I don't... I don't care. I mean, I'm not ashamed of my love. I love him so much. And, you know, I think I can make him happy. I think I could be exactly what he needs if he could just. Oh, dear. What? Nothing. What? I know what love is. I do. I mean, just because I don't look like you doesn't mean that. Whoa, whoa there. What? Who said you had to look? like anything to understand. Okay, you know what, I, I get it. I, I know what I look like. Everybody thinks that if, if you look like me, you have to settle for all the Steve Buscemi's of the world, but. You're lovely. No, I'm not. You are. No, I'm not. Sonia, you have beautiful. Stop, no, I swear to God, if you say eyes or hair, I will cut your heart out with this swizzle stick. Oh. Okay, you know, we all know the codes. I mean, you know your codes, right? With the lingering glances and little touches, you get me? You know sexy lady code, right? Mm, um, right? Yes, yes, I, I guess so. Okay, well, I know ugly girl code. I, I know what the looks and- You're not- Okay, whatever, homely plain, nice looking, lovely, a great person. She's just terrific. What a great personality. And the worst one, the most brutal code there is, nice eyes, nice hair. Okay, okay, so you're not all that pretty. Is, is that what you wanna hear? Yes, it is, thank you. You do actually have some lovely physical qualities, but, but I get that they don't quite add up to the picture that you might want them to. How, how's that? Good. I mean, now you're being a good stepmother. You're telling me the truth. <laughs> well, good. I, I so want us to be friends. Then keep being honest with me. I will. And it, you be honest with me. I will. So, about the doctor. Oh, God. <laughs> Tell me about it. Does, does he know how you feel? No, I mean, I, I don't think so. I haven't, well, you know. Shown him or shown him? Shown? You know, lingering glances, casual touches. I like you code. No, no, never. Never? Well, I just told him a story about butterflies, but it was a disaster. Hmm. I mean, what's the point? He loves women like you and they love him. So what hope do I have? I mean, even though I could be better for him than anyone else in the world, I mean, I could save him. I could be exactly what he needs if he could just see past my stupid face and whatever and just love me. What about what you need? I don't need anything. I have too many things. I, I have to give my things away. You know, I, I'm out of room inside. I'm like, like an emotional hoarder. I have to give my heart away to somebody else or else I'm going to explode. Sonia, you have no idea what you're talking about. You just can't give and give and give even if it feels like you could. You're just wrong. And if you try to give, give, give to those who are willing to take, 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 well, it usually doesn't end up well. In fact, it never ends up well. 
Well, thanks. You've cheered me up tremendously. Now, hold on. What? What, I'm just wrong and stupid and young and ugly and you're going to be my friend by pointing out how wrong I am about everything? I'm trying my best to be helpful, to help you. You see, you're not looking at things with the clearest oh, of wait, eyes. Wait, why don't you take my swizzle stick so you can poke me in the eye, too? I'm trying to be your friend. Okay, and... shut up. Don't try to be my friend by telling me that I'm bad and wrong. You know, being honest doesn't mean you have to be a condescending bitch. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I, I'm just, I'm just so, so, so unhappy. You can't make somebody love you, can you? Well, maybe you can, but I can't. I can't. I'm just me. I'm nothing but me. And I hate that so much. I'm so sorry you do. Life sucks. No, it doesn't. Life sucks. No. It doesn't. Oh, well, what does life do then? Um, it, uh, um, um, intermission.
Hello there. Thank you for sticking around. Great to see you all. We have four more lovely scenes, but first we wanna quickly remind you <laughs> all of why we're here tonight. First, Marsha P. Johnson was an activist, self-identified drag queen, performer and survivor. She was a prominent figure in the Stowan Uprising of 1969. Ooh, there's something you won't find in the history books. Learn something new every day. Marsha P. Johnson, Institute protects and defends human rights of black transgender people. We do this by organizing, advocating, creating an intentionally community to healing, developing transformative leadership and promoting our collective powers. The other charity we chose was Campaign Zero. They support the analysis of policing practices across the country, research to identify effective solutions to end police violence, technical assistance to organizers leading police accountability campaigns and the development of model legislation and advocacy to end police violence nationwide. Our GoFundMe page should be in the description box below. Also, when you donate to either of these charities because they are nonprofit organizations, your donation is tax deductible. Oh, the more you know. Uh, we are, uh, we're doing this tonight because not everyone is able to, to protest or participate in person for health concerns. So together, we are bringing the opportunity for change to you in the comfort of your own bathrobe. So um, activism could be so comfortable. Uh, you can find where to donate in the, in the description of our video down below on our Instagram page by a simple uh, click, of a, click of a link and typing in your payment info, you made a difference. Uh, like you were shopping on Amazon minus the shipping fees, but this time your purchase will benefit the communities that are in need. Um, I believe we're about to start the show. Uh, thank you again for watching. Now, please let some of our friends entertain you as we return to our scheduled broadcasting. Oh. Mr. Carroll. Hello. Please join me, why don't you? Sure. Did you take the bus? I'm not much for public transportation. Oh, well, how do you get around? For a while, I was using this pair of Silver Streak uh, custom-made roller skates, but one day when I was on my way to work, this evil gang of Kung Fu rollerbladers came out of nowhere and hit me over the head with a pair of 14-inch octagon nunchakus and, and stole my skates and flung them into an infectious waste incinerator. So now I pretty much walk everywhere. That's such a horrible story. Yeah. Those skates were pretty important to me. I trust you've had better luck lately. Luck is a concept perpetuated by casino bureaucrats and the lottery establishment. Oh. Well. Hmm. How was your walk anyway? Uh, as good as could be expected. Uh, the constant assault of barking dogs was not very encouraging. This German shepherd practically read me the riot act. With all those kids disappearing from the junior high school, I'm sure everyone's keeping Fido in watchdog mode. I think the whole town's on edge about it. In any event, I'm glad you made it here safely. This is my favorite place. The clientele is quite varied. <laughs> Looks like a lot of faking it goes on. Faking what? The stuff that makes the machine happy. What machine? The one that doesn't have an off switch. Well, how are you feeling, Mr. Carroll? Are you in a lot of pain? I brought you some relief just in case. Heavily advertised over-the-counter pharmaceuticals don't interest me much. And please don't call me Mr. Carroll. I'm not your science teacher. My name is Yule. It rhymes with mule. Yule. <laughs> I'm not a man by word games. 
Sorry. So did you go to the dentist? Because I'd be happy to help pay for the damage. Don't worry, I'm not gonna sue you. I don't trust dentists anyway. Oh, why? I'm generally suspicious of anyone who plays tricks with trademark anesthetics. But the anesthetics contingent into a myriad of dental procedures. You just used the word myriad. Yes, I believe it's primary nominative definition is quote unquote, a large number. It's secondary nominative definition, albeit archaic, it's, it is the quantity 10,000. I'm pretty confident my use of the word is correct. It's just fancy is all, like you wear a cape or something. A cape? Besides, I'm not much for procedure. Uh, I feel that way about the medical profession in general. Well, the band should be here in a few minutes. Do you enjoy karaoke? I've never done it. Do you like music? I used to be in a garage band. Oh, wow, a garage band. Where did you play? A garage. What were you called? The thing that wasn't there. The thing that wasn't there. That's very interesting, sort of paradoxical. Isn't just about everything? Well, it depends on one's worldview. My worldview involves ominous cloud formations and lots of shattered glass. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. It's not your fault. I know. I just... Hmm. So, how big was your garage band? It was pretty much just me. There was this one other guy for a while too, but he got industrial poisoning and he had to be sent to another part of the country to be poked and prodded. I see. What instruments do you play? I play guitar, uh, keyboards, uh, drums, uh, lap steel, sitar, bass, the cello, the glockenspiel, and the E flat alto saxophone. And I have this three foot length of Primaflex tubing that makes some pretty interesting noises. <laughs> well. I'm quite impressed. You must be very talented. Talent is a fallacy created by gym teachers and top 40 radio droids. So how did you wind up getting the job at the Big Beatdown? I got fired from this place and no one else would hire me. Where were you working before? The plant. The Zenith plant in Olmo Road? I prefer not to use the Z word because they're evil, soul-sucking fascists, and whenever I hear that word, I feel like my head might twist off. I'll be sure to use its pronominal modifier in the future. So what were you doing at your former place of employment? I made knobs. So why did they fire you, if you don't mind me asking? Someone saw me draw an X over this guy's face in the newspaper. So they fired you? Uh-huh. That seems a little extreme. Who was the guy in the newspaper? President. Uh, the television plan? No, the other one. Of the United States. Yeah, genius. I'm in book publishing. Children's books. <laughs> do you do the pictures or the words? I actually work on both. I'm a production editor. I don't like books with pictures. Pictures lie mostly. Well, there are books without pictures too, like children's novels and chapter books for early readers. I'd most likely be more into them. Are you an avid reader? I've read certain manifestos by significant historical leaders. Um, I, I also like car manuals and this one particular quarterly journal that deals with population statistics. Do you have any gum? Actually, I do. Would you like some? Yes, please. Thanks.
You're welcome. So how are you preparing your eggs? Excuse me? <laughs> when I called, you said you were preparing eggs. I was boiling them. Oh, I just love them hard boiled. I know this wonderful recipe for deviled eggs. I like them plain. Oh, but deviled eggs are delicious, Yule. Please don't do that. What? Use my name at the end of a sentence. You can use it at the beginning, but not at the end. It's what the drones and human resources do when they begin the termination process. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, I try to steer clear of corporate discourse as much as possible. I don't eat the eggs anyway. What do you do with them? I can't really talk about it. Okay. Would you care for something? Drink. I don't drink alcohol. Are you an alcoholic? I don't like the taste. And plus, it's exactly the thing they're trying to put inside you. Who? The heart shrinking marketing goblins and corporate warlocks. Well, how about something else? Something spritzy. I guess I wouldn't mind a root beer. Great, I'll be right back. They didn't have root beer, so I got you a Shirley Temple. Those are good too. Mm. It's quite a shirt, by the way. Did you get it in Hawaii? I got it at TJ Maxx. Oh, well, it looks very nice on you. Thanks. You're welcome, Yule. I mean, Yule, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Your hands. Mm -hmm. What about them? They're small. I am, yes. I notice things like that. You're quite observant. When you hit me, I'm always surprised. That I hit you? By the power produced by such a small hand. Hey, uh, thanks for coming in. Uh, you want some coffee? Thank you. Yeah, I'm fine. All right then. So, uh, we were talking about the uh, White Horse Tavern, right? On Hudson Street? Yes. That is a famous bar, you know. It's got a long literary tradition. They say that Dylan Thomas died waiting for a room there. Hadn't heard. So, I went and talked to the bartender there. Remember I told you I was gonna go talk to them, maybe see if they had noticed something that you and your friend didn't notice? Yeah, you said. So, I talked to Stacy. She said she don't remember you coming in that night. It's 
pretty crowded. Do you remember telling me that the bartender on duty that night was a tall guy? Sarah ordered the drinks. I wouldn't have. So you didn't get a good look at him? I didn't. Not even enough to tell if it was a guy or a girl? Sorry. So after you leave the White Horse, you go for a walk. You end up in the park area outside the playground. And you're doing what? Sitting one of those benches and we're talking to each other and, and this guy says something well what did he say something like hey you want a party well what did you say i didn't sing sarah said something yeah she so she provoked him what no, just... You told him to fuck off, and that's when he hit her, right? No. I mean, if you guys had just ignored him or... He hadn't started it. And but... would it? But Sarah had to say something, and that's what got him pissed. And that's why he hit her. No, okay, look, he started it. He came up to us all and right, started... All right, all right. Jeez. He said something first, huh? Something that upset her? What upset her so much? He was bothering us. I don't know what would upset you, so I... She says something. He says something. Hmm? She goes, leave us alone, and then he says something. What was it? Did he call her something? What? No, you're... Like a name. No, you're not... <laughs> What is a name that he might call her? I don't know. How about um, bitch? No. God. Didn't call her a bitch? I don't see how this is relevant to he what happened. Bitch. No. Well, what then? What did he call her? He shouldn't have come up to us and- What? Fine, okay, fine. He, he, called, he called us a- Oh. Fucking dykes, okay? Pussy eating dykes, the both of us. Now, why would he call you that? Two nice girls just sitting on a park bench talking. Why would he call you dykes? Because we were kissing. Okay. This is the first kiss. We didn't know he was there until he said something. Hey, save some of that for me. So Sarah told him to leave us alone. Couldn't reach. Then he offered to pay us, okay? He said he'd give us 50 bucks if we went with him to a motel and let him watch. He said we could dry hump or whatever it is we like to do. It turns him on just to see it. So I grabbed her arm and started walking away, but he came after us, called us fucking dykes, pussy, pussy eating dykes. So Sarah told him to fuck off, okay? She's not. He came up, he pulled her hair. He grabbed her and pulled her away, okay? I yelled for someone to call the police. Then he pushed her against the building and started banging her head against the building. Told her to watch her cunt licking mouth, but he had his hand over her jaw and she couldn't, she just made these mangled, like she was trying to breathe. So I came up behind him and pulled his hair, but he turned around and punched me in the stomach. I threw up, it got on him. Sarah tried to get away. He grabbed her and started banging her head against his knee. Tried to hold his arm back, but he was stronger and he knocked her out, okay? Then he turned around, pushed me to the ground and started kicking me. That's when someone yelled something, the cops are coming. So he took off in the opposite direction, west. He was limping, he must have hurt his knee. That's what happened.
Say it again. What happened to your tooth? I knocked it out this morning. I was hammering in the shed. Hi, Kayleen. Hey again. Sorry for your dad. Sorry for him? About him. You missed the wake. Everybody went home. There's nobody in there but a dead guy in a box. I thought it went till nine. 8.30. It's good to see you. Well, fuck off, toothless piece of shit. <laughs> it's so good to see you. No, no, please don't hug me. Look, I, I'm all hugged out. I've been hugging people all day. Everybody's in here and they're like, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your loss. I mean, you know, what loss? If I hug one more person, I'm going to choke up my own spit. It's been forever, Lena. I've been here. Where the fuck have you been? College. <sighs> College. I tried to find you. I came back in summer and Christmas. I tried to look for you, but I couldn't find you. I was here. Where? Not listed. Not at home. I work. I work and I sleep. What do you do? Nothing. Well, not right now. Looking? I don't know. Seems like whenever I'm home, I'm looking for you. Well, you didn't look hard enough. Jeez. Uh, Leany? You're here now! <laughs> I found you! Would you stop? You're a freak. I missed you, Leany. Don't call me that. Nobody calls me that. I call you that. What are you smoking? Cigarette? Give me one. Which one do you smoke? I don't. So, what have you been up to for these past four years? No, no. Can we please not do that? Look, I don't, I don't feel like recapping the last four years of my life. Oh. <laughs> oh. I've been waiting tables. Your dad told me you were waitressing. I told you, I came by your house. You talked to my dad? I came by your place. When? This was like a year ago. I stopped to see if you were there. You're, I talked to your dad. He told me that you were waitressing, but he didn't know where. You talked to my dad? You think I enjoyed that? I hated being in the same room with that guy. May he rest in peace. He never told me you stopped by. Big surprise there. God, he is such an asshole. Oh. I'm alone now, Dougie. I'm not alone. Yeah, I am. My mom died last year. What? She died? When? How? I don't know. Her stomach. Jeez, Leany. I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah, I get it. Yeah, you're sorry for my loss. Look, I hadn't seen her in like 11 years. You know, her ex-boyfriend called to give me the news. <sighs> you know what my dad said when I told him? What? He started crying, and he told me that she was a better woman than I'd ever be. You know, this, this bitch who walked out on us. You're not alone, Lini. Don't call me that. Lini. Shut up. Lini Dini. I'm gonna burn you with my cigarette. <laughs> Oh God, you're gonna need a fake tooth like stat. You look fucking inbred. <laughs> Did it hurt? You're crazy. It's good to see you too. Well, I, I think I'm home now. What does that mean? Well, it means I'm, I'm home, I'm back. Well, that's good, I guess. You know, whenever something crazy would happen in college, or I would see something amazing or beautiful or fucked up, I would think, man, Lini would love this shit. I would just imagine that you'd be there, you know? I imagine you'd be there and I'd start having a conversation with you. 
just start talking to you. You know, there's a word for that. It's called schizophrenia. I just want to be friends again. You're the one who left. Are you okay? I'm fine. Uh, are you okay? Look, I told you I'm fine. Come here. No. Meline, come here. Fuck off. Look at me. What, Doug? I love you. Your parents were here tonight? I... no. They sent flowers? Your mom said she was gonna bring over a casserole. I mean, that's the type of person your mom is like. She's the type of woman who brings over a casserole. They love you too. You know, this is so fucked up what you're doing right now. What? What are you talking about? Trying to kiss me? You know, coming back like this, telling me that, that, that you love me, that your parents love me? Me. Just leave me alone! Meanie! No, you are so stupid! You think that everything is one way, but you don't know anything! What? What don't I know? You don't know me, okay? You think, you think I'm, I'm someone, some, some girl that you dreamed up a million years ago? Well, then, who are you? Nothing. Just, just <laughs> shut up. No, who are you? If I don't know you, then who are you? Shut up! Don't. Why not? I got some fireworks in my car. You're retarded. I do. I got a mess of them in my trunk. Killer too. Japanese shit. We're not gonna go light off fireworks. Why not? I don't know. Maybe because we're not 15 anymore. Maybe because you're retarded. Or maybe because I have to go wake up tomorrow morning to go bury my father. We'll go down to the bridge on Old Roanoke, just like old times. I'm living with somebody. You're, you're living with someone? Like, you've got a roommate? No, I'm living with a guy. We've been together for a year. Where is he? He's not with you? He doesn't like funerals. He doesn't like funerals. Well, this isn't a funeral. This is a wake. I don't know. He said that seeing a dead body would, like, wig him out. Just shut up about it, okay? You're with this guy. Okay, you know what? Don't judge him. He's sensitive. Fuck him. Fuck him, fuck him, fuck him! Oh, that's nice. You know what, Kayleen? Jesus Christ, I came to your house last year. I came looking for you and I found your dad. And I know he hates me. He always has. He hates my guts. And he said, I don't know where she is. She is where she is. He didn't care and he didn't care to know. And I was just about to leave, but I didn't. I didn't. I, sat, I stayed and I said to that son of a bitch, do you remember? Do you remember, asshole? Do you remember what I said to you? I said, you are fucking worthless. You have a daughter who is the most perfect thing on this earth. She is the most perfect being to ever walk the planet and she loves you because you're her stupid father. And you don't even notice. You don't even see what you have. You just fucked her up and damaged her and you've never taken the time to care that she's a fucking angel. So fuck you, cocksucker! And then I told him I, I wish that he'd die alone, which he did. I feel a little guilty about that now. I can take care of you, Amy. No, I don't need anybody to take care of me. Hey, where are you going? I'm gonna go light off some fireworks.
Bye. Don't blow your face off. The only thing we can do. Which is what? You need to start changing. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm dead serious. Strip. I can't do that. And yet magically you will. But why, why can't you just do musical numbers all the Because that is not a drag show. That is me in my bedroom as a teenager and no one should have to pay to see that. Look, Look I, we're I, in the I, same I, boat now, baby. Grab an I all. don't know anything about doing drag. Like that's ever stopped anyone from doing drag. Take your clothes off. We're turning you into a girl. No, 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 hey, no, if I lose this job, I'm going to be working the register at a Walmart by weekend next. Where do you think you'll end up? Oh, okay. First, we need to reshape your body. Tits, hips, ass, no bulge. Unfortunately, we don't have time to tape. Tape what? The Golden Girls on Lifetime TV for women. What do you think? Here. These will give you some curves and obscure your boy parts. You want me to put this on? Yes, Mary. Okay. Put it on. And then when you're done with that, put these on. <laughs> these are going to itch like a bitch, but we don't have time to shave. Drag queens are resourceful. I am a drag queen, therefore I am resourceful. We're just gonna have to make this work. How are we gonna make this work? Lord knows! We're just gonna try. Okay. That's right. Get those little piggies in there. <laughs> All the way up. Piggies and calves and <laughs> cock and ass. We need to get the whole family up in there. Okay. All right. Next, we need to give you some titties. Oh. And a skinny waist. Okay, okay, okay. Working on it, working on it. Suck it in, baby. Beauty hurts! Oh, get yeah, breathe! That's Jesus. how you know it's working. Ugh. Okay, next, some tits. Let's not get too crazy here. Okay, okay. Here. Hey, okay. Cut that out! I swear, if men had breasts, the world would cease to function. Sorry. I'll help you with the abs. They're pretty <laughs> Okay. Next, we need Okay. All right, I got you. Okay. Okay. okay, outfit, outfit, outfit. Yeah. Luckily you're doing Edith PF who made drab look chic. Okay, I can't, I can't do this. I'm, I'm sorry. Hey! We're gonna have to talk to Eddie. Listen. Gonna... Listen! Baby coming. Daddy makes no money. Daddy puts on funny dress. Baby goes to Harvard. Put on the dress. Are we almost ready? We will be if you leave us alone. Okay, what's next? Wig! Oh my god, wig. Okay, this is from my Janet Reno phase. Don't judge me. Okay, okay. Next, we need shoes. What shoe size are you, baby? Uh, 13. Okay, first of all, you're fucked. Second of all, if a certain rule about a certain correlation between two certain body parts is correct, then we're gonna need a lot more tape next time. <laughs> next time, there's not gonna be next time. I'm doing this once. If I had a dollar for every time a straight man told me that. <laughs> Put these on. Okay, there are a million things you need to know about drag. But the only thing you need to know about drag right now is that it's about persona. What's your story? You're a woman now. How does a woman walk? How do I know? How did EPF walk? Oh, just try and walk with poise and confidence. Okay, fuck the poise and confidence. No. Just try not to break your neck. No, no, God damn it! No! I, uh, I, I, can't, I cannot do this. I What's cannot. the worst that can happen? I'll be humiliated. Yeah, but who will know it's you? You're a pretty girl now, Mom. Mama, who? Killing yourself. I, I, I don't even know what song I'm doing. Oh, it's called Padam Padam Padam. Know it? Of course not. Look, easiest trick of the trade. If you don't know the words, watermelon motherfucker will always see you through. Perfect, you got it. By the way, the song's in French. It's in French! Just watermelon motherfucker, and then when you get to the chorus, Padam Padam Padam. 
Perfect, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Cleo is proud to present the, the... What's her name? Oh, shit, how can I forget? Quick, baby. What town was your mama born in? Uh, the Macon, Georgia. What was the name of the first girl you kissed? Uh, yeah, Abby McBride. Georgia McBride. Her name is Georgia McBride. Miss Georgia McBride. Yeah. So a quick thank you to everyone who joined us today, uh, especially those of you at home pantsless in bed or those watching this recorded because you fell asleep before it started. I see you and I respect you. Uh, before we go, we wanted to remind you that we are collecting donations for the Marsha P. Johnson Foundation and Campaign Zero. You can find the where to donate in the description of our video down below and on our Instagram page. And for those of you who can't donate, there are other ways to help. Protests are still happening around the country. There are still petitions to sign. And it has never been easier to call your local representatives or find out information about their stances or how they're handling the current situations. I encourage you to simply search the hashtag Black Lives Matter on any platform and you can find a plethora of information, but please do your own research as well. We encourage you to use the information highway and social media to do some good in the world. We need it. If you've been watching this incredible performance, well, these incredible performances, 